Zealand, and we came to Mexico a month before COVID. A month before COVID. So what was life, well, what was your, first, what's your name? Ah, good idea. Okay, so I'm Wendy, the mum. Um, we've got our two eldest sons, uh, Max and Toby, are still home in New Zealand. They've, they've been here, but they're studying at the moment. I'm Demi. And I'm Cooper. And I'm Brendan. Let's go into what your life was before Baja. Oh, good question. All right, start us off, Demi. <laughs> well, I was at school and doing lots of sports and activities and, yeah. What grade were you in? I was in grade five when we left. I and how grade old five? were you? Yeah. Mm. Grade five. You're in yeah. grade five. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and I was, I was in school as well. I was in grade six and Doing, doing a lot of sports as well and going to church on Sundays obviously with the family and mm-hmm. uh-huh. yeah, hanging out with a lot of friends as well. Yeah. So there was, that there was life before we moved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. We had, uh, we actually had a countertop business, so making granite and marble, mm-hmm. bench tops and, uh, and laminate and so we had that, we'd had a business there for five years. Five years. Five years have been doing that, yeah. So before that was just construction and property and 
was our, our sort of life before that. Okay. Wendy was Wendy, you were busy as well. I was coaching as a job, so um, yeah, I was a strength coach, and we had four kids at four different schools, and yeah, life was fun, but it was busy. Yeah, yeah, busy. yeah. yeah. Mm. like a lot of other people, right? It was they, pretty they, normal. They hide, like, <laughs> yeah, busy, 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 full, yeah. full, full. Yeah. yeah, it was good. So, when was the first time you guys came to Bama? Yeah, well, it was really um, that was February 2020, so a month before COVID. Was the very first the time, very yeah. First time. yeah. Okay. We traveled a lot as a family um, to probably every other continent, just about, um, doing small like holidays with a mission, a bit of a trip as well. Spend some time, and the last one that we'd done before we came to Mexico was actually Africa. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was pretty fun. Yeah. It's a whole other story, Bob. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why you're here in Baja. What brought you here? Oh, that's a good question, and um, yeah, it's a kind of a crazy answer I've got, is because of two dreams, that's, mm -hmm. that's my short answer. I went to sleep one night, Wendy uh, messaged a friend, mm -hmm. um, sort of an acquaintance, sort of 10 years prior, saying, hey, look, hey, we're messaging you, and um, we're in YWAM in Uganda, this is a funny story, and then they carried on, I went to sleep, and I woke up in the morning, and Wendy says, hey, I think we should be going to Africa for a year. Like, what? <laughs> Mexico, oh, yeah. Mexico for a year, yeah. sorry, yeah. And um, like, what happened? Like, what do you mean we should go to Mexico for a year? It's like, oh, I was messaging. I've never been to Mexico. We'd never been to, um, never really been, traveled to the Americas at all, really. Okay. And um, like, well, we've got business and we've got four kids in four different schools and all these reasons why we shouldn't be going. Yeah. And like, oh, she just said, you know, I think we should pray about it. And anyway, that day, um, the kids started hearing from God. Like, and oh, our, wow. it was stories that, you know, things happened that, it was really new for us. Like that stuff had not really been happened to us before. Right. So we were in Africa, I think maybe in Kenya, and everyone like, instead of having like taxis and stuff, they have a bunch of motorbikes and they're all like the same brand, like this red motorbike and they have, um, the brand is called Bajaj, B-A-J-A-J, -A -A -J. and on the specific, and the night before, my mom had just told us, oh, we're moving to Baja, and I didn't really know where, where that was or wherever, yeah. and I was like, oh, cool, and then we were, it was just me and my dad, and we were just, and I was like, oh, that there says Baja on the motorbike, because the last J had been broken off, so it's out of Baja, and that there for me was just a clear sign from God, I feel, that it okay. was just, it was the place to go. He first. got like a um, like a a sign. Um, well, I think he shared it to like all of us. I think at the same time. Yeah. What was it? It was on a motorbike. They usually the brand is Bajaj in Africa, and uh, J was knocked off it, so it was like Baja, which is where oh, we are. Wow. Oh. And this is before you guys even knew that you yeah. were coming here? Uh huh. So how, so what happened? He said, hey, that's weird, it says Baja on that bike? Yeah, or? so mum, like that morning or like a few days before, she was like, oh, talking to some friends in Baja, blah, blah. And then a few days went by and then um, he saw that and told mum and dad. And um, so back in New Zealand, um, seven years ago, I woke up from my sleep and I'd had a really specific dream, so specific that I got a pen and paper and wrote it down immediately, all the details, which I'd never wow. done that from a dream before. Um, and so what I saw was what I knew was a missionary retreat and it was a two-story Spanish building. Mm -hmm. um, it had a downstairs open air kitchen, there was red flowering bougainvillea, um, I could see the waves in the distance. So those are all the details wow, I wrote down. Very detailed. Yeah, so detailed. And so I was like, okay, I want to remember these. So yeah. I wrote them down. And I was looking at thinking, I wonder what country this is in. Because we were home in New Zealand. And I thought, I guess it's Spain because it looks Spanish. Yeah. And I tried to get a sense of direction because um, I had been to Spain a couple of times. But all that I felt is I felt turned around which is kind of random, but I wrote it down. Yeah. And then um, nothing, nothing more happened, no more dreams, nothing. The years ticked on. Um, 
Then five, five years after my dream, we ended up coming as a family to Tijuana and mm -hmm. working um, as, vo well, as volunteers at a mission called YWAM. Um, and this YWAM base builds small homes for homeless Mexicans, so we just came to volunteer. Mm. After we'd been there six weeks, um, I woke up from my second dream that I also wrote down. And in this dream, it said your, um, your YWAM base and missionary retreat will be between 50 and 55 minutes from Cabo. Um, that's crazy on just all amazing. kinds of... <laughs> that's just amazing. What's crazy amazing is that you woke up and wrote it all down, right? Yeah. I mean, most people would be like, oh yeah, that was a dream. Okay, well, I wonder what that meant. But to write it down, I think yeah. that... Yeah, because I've had a lot of dreams, but I've never felt to write them down, yeah. just these two. And so, yeah, I, I wrote it down in my diary and dated it, told Brendan, but no one else, because it was crazy. Yeah. Um, and even more crazy, I didn't know where Cabo was at that stage, because we'd only just recently arrived to Tijuana, kind of getting to know our way around Mexico. And I was yeah. like, I think I've kind of heard it's down the bottom of the Baja or something. So I looked online, Google Earth, and I looked what's kind of 50 to 55 minutes north. Mm -hmm. I knew it had to be on this coast because I'd seen surf waves. Yeah. And um, then I kind of went to Todos Santos and that was too fast. Then I came back to 55 minutes and there was just cactus fields. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm this going crazy. Yet. Exactly. <laughs> so I just left it. That was it. Yeah. Um, what did you think about Wendy's dream? Like when she initially told you, this is my dream, this is what I woke up and wrote down, this is what God told me, what was your initial thought? I, I, I struggle to remember the very first time she talked about that first dream, but the second dream when we were in Tijuana and it was 50 to 55 minutes from Cabo, I was like, this is insane. Yeah. Like, what's happening? Right. You know, we're just trying to be really open and, and allow God to lead, lead us and to try and listen to his voice, which is a big thing that why when uh, wants to teach and train people yeah. to really try and be aware of God's voice right, yeah, right. and what He's doing. And so this was really new to us. Yeah, to yeah. actually listen that profoundly, right? And all the details and everything that was going into it. I yeah. can just imagine that you guys are all, are we just going crazy or is this a real thing? What's and then when all the doors start to open, that's like, okay, uh, yeah, this is where we're supposed to be. And what's funny, uh, Olivia, is that Wendy had always said, oh, you know, if God would just write it in the sky, I'd yeah. go and do it. Well, <laughs> here he is, like, slamming us in the but face with it. Then some months went by, and um, through different circumstances, COVID being one of them, we ended up camping around the Baja, the bottom of the Baja, for a month, which was wow. not planned. Um, so we just, yeah, we grabbed a tent and all our surfboards. So you tank camped? Yeah, yeah. We, wow, we there wasn't did. even a fifth wheel involved. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no. And, but through COVID, there was no one on the beaches, so we literally just free camped our way around. Okay. Um, a few people told us on our trip that if we were coming up this coast to stay at a place called the Surf Camp, which is just in Pescadero up the road, yeah. we were like, sure, it sounds like us, the Surf Camp. Yeah. And so we came here, we had a few great days and we were at the beach and the kids surfed and on our final day I just went and thanked the owner because he'd mm. been super kind um, and said you know hope we come back one day and just as a parting kind of joke I said to him you need to find us a oh, I'd found out also he was a realtor by that stage okay. he owned the, the surf camp and yeah. was a realtor so I said to him like oh you need to find us a hotel to buy for tired missionaries and he said, I've got a hotel for sale. <laughs> and I was like, oh, like we're leaving in an hour, you know. Right, I have no I'm time. I'm kind of joking. <laughs> and he said, oh, I can show you in half an hour. It's just down at Cerritos. So I was like, sure, okay. I'll Why have, not? I'll have a look at this hotel. <laughs> we drove down there as a family. We packed up quick, drove down and walked in. And as soon as I saw the hotel, um, it ticked all the boxes of what I had had in my dream five years earlier. Wow. So I started subtly hitting my husband Brendan, just going, it's from my dream. <laughs> like all the details, we could see the waves in the distance. There was red flowering bougainvillea everywhere, a downstairs open air kitchen, and it's a two story white Spanish building. And so they were, you know, trying to show us the rooms and were all like wanting to sell us their hotel. But I'd just gone speechless, which yeah. if you knew me for two minutes, you know <laughs> that's unusual. Um, so, yeah, we just, we looked and we said, you know, thanks very much. We'll have a think about it. 
and we walked out and got in the car and then I thought about my second dream, how it had said the location would be between 50 and 55 minutes, yeah. uh, 50, 50 to 55 minutes. And so I said to Toby, our son that was with us at the time, I said, Toby, can you just pop it in your phone? How far is it to Cabo? Mm -hmm. He puts it in his phone and he goes, it's 53 minutes, Mel. Oh my gosh, that whole story and, is just every time, I mean, I've heard it before, <laughs> but hearing it again is just the same. It just gives me chills, it's just like that. Yeah. I, I don't know, it's just very powerful. Nothing very powerful. ever happened like yeah. this before for us. Um, yeah, like we, we try and follow God's leading and we, you know, we pray about open doors and closed doors, but this was just out of our realm. It was of, in of your usual. face, like, you better do this. It was so <laughs> specific, like a hit on the head, which yes. clearly we needed. Our calling was to have a YWAM base and a retreat for missionary and pastors. So we had the, we had the hotel to become the retreat, but we knew also that we needed some land to start a YWAM base. Mm -hmm. And we were out of money. We were negative, negative money already. Um, and land was going up quite a lot around here because right. it's a beautiful place. So we talked about it on a Friday night saying we have to maybe put a lo uh, an ad in a local Facebook group here and ask if anyone's got like a super cheap bit of land like no. right back away from the beach with a lot of cactus on, all the things <laughs> that make it cheaper. Um, so we decided we would do that on the Monday. But that weekend we had a couple of guests from Canada arrive. Um, they. They checked in, they were staying for a few nights. Mm -hmm. They got chatting to the young girl that checked them in, who was um, here volunteering with YWAM, mm -hmm. and she explained to them how we're, it's, we're converting it into a missionary retreat and we're part of YWAM. And they immediately pricked up their ears and said, oh, we'd love to talk to the people that are doing this. So we agreed to have breakfast with them the next morning and they're a lovely couple, similar age and stage to us, and you know, we had a great breakfast. And then they asked if we could come and see their plot of land, and it was just within walking distance, just a few hundred meters from the hotel. Mm -hmm. And so we said, sure. Yeah. So we came over here, and they said, we would like to give half our plot of land to YWAM, which we had never met these people before, um, wow. They didn't even know our surname and they were giving us their land exactly what we needed in the <laughs> best spot. It's a flat building site, not lots of cactus, like everything going for it. Um, and so the lovely couple were Don and Laurie and they, they had had, uh, I guess, a strong impression from God the same year I had my initial dream. Wow. He was kept awake <clears throat> all night by God, he believes, to um, purchase this plot of land and yeah. give half of it to God's work, which in time he felt very strongly to <clears throat> give it to YWAM. So did they ever participate in YWAM? Do they, I mean, had they ever been, nothing, no, nothing to do they, with YWAM? They knew, like a few of their <coughs> friends had done YWAM, they knew what it was. Yeah. Um, they'd never done YWAM or, you know, felt a big call to it or anything. Yeah. But God spoke to them so clearly that it was YWAM that they just gave it. And they, the amazing thing is they didn't just give us the land and walk away. Mm -hmm. They've given us the land and then they come down as often as they can. Like they're busy, they've got jobs in Canada, but they just help in wow. every practical way possible. Um, yeah, they are just, it's incredible. So God's called them to yeah, be unbelievably generous, yes. but also then to keep giving uh -huh. and that's yeah. what they've done. So to us, they are just such an example. I'm sure it just makes, it gives them great joy just to see what this land, I mean, a land that was told to purchase for this specific mission, right? Yeah. And then they just purchase it and to see it just yeah. evolve and to, I mean, you know, once everyone starts coming to this and, and just seeing what it's about. And yeah. So let's talk about the funding. Yeah. So how have you funded all this? How have you come to make this little camp that you got going here? That is um, unbelievably from people's donations. Um, some people we have not even ever met and they have felt to give quite a lot of money 
to wow. what we're doing here. So some people are feeling to call, called to give to the retreat, mm -hmm. and um, which is amazing. So we're halfway off paying that off. Um, wow. Other people, well, like Don and Laurie, were called to give the land. Other people have been called to give the price of a tent. So this will be our accommodation and big glamping tents here. And we've got the bathrooms built around us. Um, and you're, how many You're camps? familiar with the bathrooms. Oh, yes, I am. There was a lot of painting involved. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. How many tents? Uh, six. Six tents. Yeah. Yep. And then we'll, um, next week we're having some containers arrive to build like um, a, a big kitchen and an office. So that, oh, nice. um, that in a seating area. So that will be all down that end and then this will be housing for team and students. And, and yeah. a lot of volunteer work to actually do you yep. know, the concrete work, the electrical, the plumbing, the bathrooms. The, the just tiling. Like, there's tiling. so many details have needed to happen. And even the tiling, like we bought the tiles before we'd built the bathrooms and we don't know how to tile and we didn't know anyone that actually was a tiler. Yeah. But um, about three months ago, a lovely, another Canadian couple, there's a little there's a thing here. Um, they asked could they come and volunteer for a couple of weeks yeah. um, in the end of October and we're like, sure, we don't know what stage we'll be up to or what will need to happen. Um, but you're welcome to come, we'd love your help. Yeah. They've come and he, he is a tiler. He is so, so skilled at tiling. Wow. So um, yeah, Brenda and Mike have tiled all the bathrooms here, shelves, around basins. Yeah. So great how all these different people just come out and just yeah. like, you know, I'm an expert in this. I'm gonna... So along that line, how do people find out about it? How did people hear about it? How do people come volunteer? How do people donate? It's mainly been word of mouth. Okay. That's, we're not the best marketers in the world, but um, yeah, it is through word of mouth. YWAM, mm. what are the ages yep. that come to YWAM? And how do the kids get here? Do they have to pay for anything? Is it all paid for? Is that why you raise the funds? How does that work? Yeah, so um, YWAM uh, is all about um, getting to know God and making Him known. And so it's typically youth with a mission, and so we're all about people between the ages of sort of 18 to 25, 30, okay. and um, giving them an experience, or having an experience together to be able to learn more about God mm -hmm. and to help um, others know Him. Okay. And so um, people, we, there's a, a what they call a discipleship training school or a DTS, and so that's sort of the, the very first school. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a three month school with different lectures for weeks, for 12 weeks, and then we go on the road and we can go and practice what we've been learning. So it's mm -hmm. a little bit different than school, a little bit different than university. Right, yeah. 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 We learn and we practice these things. We practice like being able to hear God's voice. We practice being able to tell our story and what how God's changed our lives. Yeah. And um, then we go on, on the road, maybe to a different country, maybe locally, mm -hmm. and practice and start to share these things so that we become more confident and we're sure about, and be more sure about what um, God has been teaching us. Or his guidance is, yeah. huh? So yeah. how often does that happen? So um, it's a, about a, a six month cycle. Okay. And so generally every quarter, around the world in different places and so we'll be doing the same thing here mm -hmm. in 2024. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll take place here. Take place here. We're pretty excited about that. That nice. you know we're, we're excited. We've got a great proximity, a great place, great yeah. weather. Oh, it's gosh, Baja, yeah. it's Mexico, <laughs> it's great food. You're right by the beach. I mean the beach is right here. The beach is right here. Yeah. Yeah. So what do the kids do the kids do do they have to pay for anything then? Yeah. Or is it just okay. Yeah they so pay their flights here. They pay their flights here and then there's a um there's a course fee and then an outreach fee as well. I keep so, saying kids, but it's actually adults as well. But yeah. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's so, right. Yeah. So, okay, so there is a fee. There's a fee, okay. yeah, and that will be um, that's up on our website. Okay. And so we just want to invite people to come. And if, if money's a problem, we want to help people um, be able to not make that a problem. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so we'd rather help. Somebody does want to come, but they struggle with. Trying to find the funds. Or... Trying to find the funds. Okay. And, and actually, that's you know that can be a big part of our faith journey. For sure. Right. Hey, right. God, you know, you, I feel like you're calling me, but I don't have, my bank account doesn't look like it. Right. Neither does mine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So quick question about, other than YWAM, when you guys yeah. got here and you started, you know, making this whole camp, 
What were people thinking around you? Did they come by, stop in, find, hey, what are you guys doing here? What's going on? What are you building? Yeah, there, there has been. There's actually been a few people that have stopped by and wanted to stay the night. <laughs> <laughs> they got their yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, can we rent the tent? And so uh, that's one of the beauties of being here and, and the, this ministry that um, with the hotel, you know, during the peak season, we've been able to still keep um, normal hotel guests coming and paying and being able to help offset the costs of bringing pastors and missionaries to be able to come and actually fulfill that part of the ministry. Mm -hmm. Being able to give them rest and restoration. So I think you know, God's certainly smarter than me. Yep. And um, we're just really seeing that mm -hmm. with um, financially, with being able to, you know, it's sustainable. Yeah. yeah. Which is just, which is great. That's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love your story. I, I just, I just hope that everybody else out there enjoys your story as much as we do. Here we are at your hotel slash retreat, right? So we didn't yeah. talk about that. We talked more, I mean, the hotel and how you bought it. But yeah. what was your intention mm -hmm. and what were you wanting to do here? So, yeah, the reason for buying the hotel was um, to make it into a retreat for missionaries and pastors. And so that's what we're in the process of doing at the moment. Okay. So it would have been nice in a lot of ways to buy it and then cut it off and be like, it's now a retreat. Yeah. But it's obviously going to take quite a bit of time to um, market it and let missionaries know mm. and build up a clientele, just like you do with any business. Yeah. And yeah. so... Um, what we've done, we've st we run it as a hotel, so full paying guests come here um, at, alongside missionary and pastors, and so they pay a hugely reduced rate. Yep. Oh, and okay. so yeah. um, they can come for a family holiday or a getaway by themselves, whatever they're needing, yep. um, yeah, at just a fraction of the cost, and we get to care for them. Oh wow, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So what kind of retreat? Like, who's been reaching out to you? Like, what yeah. are people wanting to do here? Ah, okay. So, people have come from all over. Like, it's amazing. Word actually does spread. We yeah. haven't done really much marketing at all yet. We're just beginning to. Um, but people have come from Turkey, from Fiji, from oh, wow. a, yeah. always Canada, always America. But a lot of those people have been serving in Africa and different places oh, like yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, they come from all over and they are needing time out in a peaceful area, mm. um, a peaceful location. And we serve breakfast here. It's a big, good breakfast. And I think it's just they oh, feel cared for. Yeah, you have. You have. <laughs> Yeah, so it just starts the day off. They can actually be cared for. That's our heart is to care for missionary and pastors mm. because a lot, a lot, a lot go years without having any kind of break themselves. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it, it works well with families here. Or it works with couples as a romantic getaway. So yeah. it really, yeah, it yeah. really is working well. Yeah. 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 So, because I, I know our church came out here and they're wanting to do a women's retreat. Yes. That's right. right. Yes. So they exactly. can yep. kind of go into something like that, yeah. right? Into Absolutely. A women's retreat. You have this huge kitchen that's covered, tables. Yeah. I mean, I think it'd be a perfect spot for yeah. yeah. something like that as yeah. well. Yeah. So right? this week we've men's got. Men's retreat. Yeah. So this week we've got uh, a group from a church in uh, Colorado coming. In Brick and Ridge, yeah. Brick and Ridge, Calvary Chapel, they're coming for a week. Wow. And they're bringing their team, their uh, missions team, their leadership team. And so they're going to spend the week here just seeking God, spending time together, seeking God. Um, next month we have uh, some friends bringing um, people from Indianapolis and they're coming for a marriage retreat. Mm. So they, they book oh, out yeah. the entire retreat. Wow. Um, and for like the whole week. For the whole, well, for uh, actually, week. The whole week. Oh, the whole week. Yeah, week they come even. out for a week. Awesome. Yeah. 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 And so, and, and then we do like, we provide some more meals and it's, if they book the whole eight rooms, then yeah. they have all this area to themselves. So it's, it's pretty fun. So they give fun. like a package deal? Yes. Like if they want to stay yes. here, or if you're staying a whole week, this is what we include. Exactly. Oh, yeah. 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 So they're having, yep. they're having some cooking lessons from our local ladies. They were amazing. Um, wow. How to make tortillas and different fillings. And um, yeah, we just have lots of different options for people. Mm. Yeah. So good. <laughs> you should do cooking class here sometime too. Yeah, yeah. that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be fun. Right. Yeah. 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 My daughter over they're pretty yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's awesome. That's perfect. I wanted to talk a little bit about this part of it as well. Yeah. Uh, YWAM. Let's go back to YWAM. Yeah. yeah. How can people reach you? 
how can they donate, and if they wanted to, um, you know, help volunteer in any way. Yep. Let our audience know yeah. that. Yeah. So um, we've got obviously got websites like everyone does. So um, the ollasretreat.org. So that's the the uh, the retreat retreat website here. Okay. And then we've got uh, ywmcarbo.org as well. And so those are the uh, our organization websites. Um, the hotel is called the Ollas de Cerritos. Mm -hmm. And so that can be found online if you wanted to come and stay. Okay. And um, on our websites there with the with YWAM and the Ollis uh, retreat, those both have um, facilities there where we can where you can give. Okay. You make online payments and things, and so that's fully deductible through the United States and through Canada mm -hmm. um, with the partners that we have around there. So okay. it's where we're been super blessed with people helping us and partnering with us to be able to provide those sorts of. Yeah. Just going. It's a great mission. Yeah. Uh, we were we were going to have that also in the comments, so everyone has all that information uh, in there. Super. Yeah. And um, so thank you too very much for sitting down with us and <laughs> interviewing with us, telling us your amazing story, and we just hope that it inspires others to take a leap of faith and mm -hmm. to help you know in this mission that exactly. you guys have. Have That's super. put together and done, and God's led you to do so. Oh, thanks yeah. for coming. Thanks, thanks so much, for Olivia, helping. JJ. Yeah, yeah we really appreciate you guys, and and uh, these guys have been amazing volunteers. <laughs> they've come, they've given up their time, brought their kids with them, brought their kids, yeah. even put their kids to work for us, which has been super great. And we're just uh, enjoying the building friendships with you both. Something